So let's grab all our pieces here. And we just want the leg, not the blueprints. And we'll just do a group here. So group and group, and we'll just call this uh, leg, doesn't matter. Say okay, and then I don't think we need the prints anymore, so let's actually get rid of those. So I'm just gonna go into display rollout, and let's go down and uh, unfreeze all down here. Okay, just so we can select our prints again. And I'm just gonna grab these three and delete them. Don't need them in here anymore, and then we'll just right click and unhide all. Get our prints back, and obviously the scale is gonna be way off, as you can see, the leg's massive, so let's just select it, and uh, we'll just jump into the front view. I'm just gonna change this back to back. All right, let's just move this over and let's actually scale it down. Maybe in the right view, it's probably gonna be easier. All right, so let's pull it over here. I'm just gonna scale it down a bit using scale. So the whole group at one time. And we'll just go down so it's closer to what we need here. And let's maybe actually rotate this as well. All right, so let's go to rotate. Make sure you have your angle snaps turned on. And I'm just gonna turn this around so it's uh, facing the right way. So 180 and I'll just pull it over here and position it in the uh, right view. So let's move it down. All right, just gonna hit Alt X, go into X-ray mode, and let's just rotate this to see if it's about the right size. So again, with the angle snap turned on, we'll just spin it. And it looks like it's gonna be about 45 degrees. And we'll just kind of move it up so it kind of matches the print. I think it's a little too small right now, so let's maybe scale it up a little bit more. And it's probably not gonna match perfectly, but that's okay. We can always adjust. All right, so let's just get it kind of in here. And we'll have to adjust it in the uh, back view as well. So let's uh, zoom in. And I'm just gonna change my rotation coordinates to local, just so we can kind of rotate on the right angle. And we'll just give it a spin, maybe 30 degrees or so. And just move it over. And we're gonna need to line it up with the print here. It's not gonna be perfect, but uh, we'll get fairly close. So let's move it in. All right, I'm just gonna go back to rotate, turn off the angle snaps and just spin it back a little bit. Let's move it over. It's close, let's actually change our coordinates for our move tool to local as well. And I'm just gonna pull this up a bit and push it back. Right, let's go forward a bit. I'm just kind of looking at the, uh, the shield here. And right, check it out in the side view. just a little bit and chances are it's probably only going to line up really in one view that's usually the, uh, the way it works so we're a little off but that's okay you can see it here right, so I'm just going to rotate a tiny bit more want to get it as close as we can it doesn't have to be uh, perfect but don't want to be off too much else it's not going to line up with our leg up here okay so that should be uh, should be fairly good let's check it out in perspective Take a look here. I just want to check out up here because we're going to have to make sure this uh, this kind of fits where we need it to. And I think that should. All right, so now that we have it scaled and rotated, let's do a save again. And we'll start working on the, uh, the mounting piece here. So just save another copy. All right, so I'm just going to maybe freeze these blueprints now. Just hit uh, freeze selected. Just make sure you don't have show frozen grid turned on. I just keep accidentally selecting them. So uh, let's maybe hide some of the other stuff here too. So we're gonna work on the mount piece here. So let's just grab the leg and this piece here and then just go into isolation mode. It'll be a little easier to see what we're doing. And now that we have the leg actually in position, we can ungroup this. So let's just select it and ungroup. And we're gonna need to put a pin through these uh, holes here, obviously. Uh, this one right here. So let's maybe just reuse this one. So I'm gonna grab that and let's go to move. I'm still on local here for the coordinates. I'm just gonna shift drag it up on the Y. Copy it. And let's just make sure it's kind of sitting in here properly. And bring it up a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit of a cap on this uh, anyway, but I wanna get it kind of centered. So let's go into the uh, right view. Just gonna move it down just a bit. And we can probably just build one half of it anyway. So let's uh, go into the uh, modify panel here. I'm just gonna cap the top. So I'll just grab the top border up here and just cap it for now. 
and let's go back into the right view. And let's just do a ring around here. So grab an edge, ring it, connect it. Uh, we'll just do one, and I'm gonna slide it up to the top here. Just past the outside of our bracket piece. And then let's just grab uh, these edges here. Control click polygon, we're just gonna do a, a quick uh, extrude here on local normal. So actually uh, do this in perspective so we can see. All right, so I'm just gonna lower this down a little bit. Let's just do maybe uh, six. And okay, and if you wanna give this some more detail, you can. Uh, I don't really think we need to, so I'm just gonna leave it. Let's maybe uh, chamfer down these two edges though. So grab those and loop them. Let's actually check our reference. And they're, they're kind of soft there, so let's just uh, do a chamfer here. Yeah, I'm just going to go up slightly. I don't want them to be too soft. All right, let's do maybe like 1.3. I think that should be fine. And we'll say OK. And we'll just copy it down for the other side. So let's do another ring around the center. One segment, no pinch, no slide. And we'll just delete the bottom half. Grab all these faces here and delete them. And then we're just going to put a symmetry on here. So symmetry modifier, let's do this on the uh, z-axis. And we're just going to select our mirror. And I'm just going to change my coordinates back to local on the move tool and just move the mirror up. And just make sure you're on local when you do it. Just, you know, so you stay on the right angle. All right, so just move this up until it kind of fits behind our bracket on this side. Like that. All right, turn off the mirror. Just position it. And then we'll uh, convert it to poly. And we can just get rid of this center edge loop. So control backspace that out of there. And I think we might want to do some smoothing groups on this piece. And if you want to, you can uh, clean up the topology here. So I might just do that quickly. I'm just going to grab that face there and this one down here. And we'll grow it once. I'm just going to delete that. And then we'll just grab uh, both borders and just recap them just to uh, cut some of the polys down. We don't need that many up there. And then I think I'll just give it a quick smoothing group. So let's uh, extend our panel again. And we'll just grab an edge here and ring it. Control click polygon and we'll just give it a number. And I might just do the one underneath. You probably won't see it, but we'll do it anyway. So I'll just give it a different number and we'll do these ones down here. All right, just hit F4, make sure everything's smoothed out properly. That looks pretty good. Okay, so let's push this back, get some more space back. And we're just going to have to make the piece that actually connects these together. So again, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on here. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of make a bracket piece that just kind of wraps around that cylinder we just made. So let's maybe uh, clone some faces off here. All right, so I'm just going to go to Polygon, turn on our back facing. And we're going to need a piece to come up the side here, so I'm just going to maybe grab one of these faces on the side. Let's actually check this in the, uh, the front view, or the back view, sorry. Alright, so I'm just going to get this one on the side that kind of lines up pretty close to the side of our box up there. Probably need to uh, adjust it in a minute, but we'll just start with that one, and I'm just going to follow it down underneath, just selecting these faces. And let's just maybe stop right about there so I'm just going to grab 14 faces and I'm going to detach these so let's go down to detach and tick on as clone and just say okay and it's going to break the faces off for us but it's not going to remove them from the original object so there won't be a hole there which is good all right exit polygon let's grab our new piece there it is and let's make it a little shorter so let's uh, go into the right view again and I'm just going to go to vertex let's turn off ignore back facing here and I'm just going to do some wireframe so I'm going to grab all the verts up here on one end, let's turn on our edge constraints. And then we're just going to move this down. All right, let's turn off local, switch back to view, and we'll just move down on the Y until we see it. And we want this piece that we're making to fit in between these two brackets, so I'm just going to move it on the inside there, and then we'll do the same thing down here. Just move these up so it fits in between, like that. We're going to take a quick look. Just apply a different color here so we can see what we're doing a little easier. 
and let's just take a look here and it's fairly thin as you can see so we'll just put a shell on this and it's still set to 10 from earlier that might be a little too thick let's take that down maybe to like 8 and then we'll just convert it to poly right, so we're going to need a piece to come up the side here so let's just grab this top polygon and I'm going to extrude this up I'm just going to take a look in the front view we're probably going to have to use some manual adjustment in a second, but uh, let's just jump in here. We'll do an extrude. I'm going to do some group, and I'm just going to crank it up a bit. And say, okay, and obviously it's not going to fit properly. It's going to be inside the piece, so I'm just going to pull it over on the X until we can kind of see the end of it. And it's intersecting, so let's just uh, go back into the back view. I'm just going to zoom in here, and I'm going to grab this edge loop right here which is the one right at the bottom of the, uh, the tab we just created. And I'm just going to control click vertex to get a vert selection. I'm going to just hold alt and deselect the two outer ones. Okay, just so I have the two inside ones selected. And I'm just going to kind of straighten these out. So let's just move them over until this line becomes pretty much straight. And if you wanted to, you could straighten out the, uh, the outside here. There's a little bit of a kink here, but that's actually all in the reference. See it right there, kind of kinks. So I'm going to leave that in there. If you want to take it out, you can. Um, let's maybe grab the top ones as well. And I'm just going to straighten this out. So let's go to scale. Uh, I'm on local here. And I'm just going to scale down on the Z axis until these kind of straighten out. All right, just so we have kind of a nice flat top. I'm just going to pull these out. I just want those on the outside of the piece, just so it's not penetrating too much. A little bit's okay. Um, I think that should be fine. So let's. Uh, Grab that top polygon again, and we'll just go back into the right view, and I'm just going to move this up. So let's change our uh, system back to local, and we'll just pull this up. Not sure how long it needs to be, so we'll check it out in a second. I just want to make sure everything's going to kind of fit together properly. And if you want to, you can could have continued this up a bit so it actually wrapped around. Um, this is how I built it the original time, so that's why I did it this way. But if you want to change it, you can. But uh, I think that should uh, be okay. All right, so let's exit isolation mode. Jump back out into our right view. I'm uh, just going to exit polygon. I'm just going to hide some of this stuff. All right, just so we can kind of see. And let's hide these as well. And there's actually the end of it right there. So we're actually almost right on. All right, so back in isolation mode, I'm just going to chamfer down the edges quickly. So let's uh, go to edge. And I'm just going to do the corners first. So let's grab these two and these two down here at the bottom. And we'll just chamfer a tiny bit. Let's go. And one might work, so we'll just say OK. And then I'm going to grab the uh, other ones here and try to loop on it. All right, let's grab the sides as well. Right loop those. And we'll just manually grab these ones here. around to this side, get these two, and just make sure we got the right ones at the top. So just the uh, front and back border edges, and we'll chamfer again. Yeah, I'm just going to do this one as well. I think that should be fine. All right, so let's uh, turn off edge, turn off our edges with F4, and just take a look. All right, we got some fauceted faces here. So let's just put a quick smoothing group on this. So let's just grab an edge there. We'll do a ring, control click polygon. Just want to make sure it goes all the way around the outline, which it does. So we'll just give that a group number. And we'll do the same thing on the inside chamfer. Control click polygon, give it a different number. And that should be good, so let's exit. All right, so I think we're in good shape for this piece. Let's put our gray on now that we're done with it. And let's unhide all. And we'll just start working on the uh, the next piece, which is going to be this pin that actually goes through the inside here, um, which actually has to sit inside the slot. So we'll do that in a sec. Let's do a save.